Hi, Dr. Kyle Kiesel here with the Functional Movement Systems, and I'm excited to share a little bit of an insight into the SFMA. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is how we utilize the Functional Movement Systems in the university setting. So my day job is a professor in a Doctor of Physical Therapy program, and we've integrated the concepts and the principles of the Functional Movement Systems within the curriculum. And when we start talking about the SFMA and the patterns, we, we just integrate in like toe touching, backwards bending, rotating, and, and we just have the students problem solve through. If, if someone couldn't complete a pattern, what would you do? And essentially then they come back to us and they show us, well, if I can't rotate, I better look at the hips and I better look at the thorax, et cetera. So we're able to make them problem solve through what ends up being our SFMA breakouts, okay? And they go through it and they're able to learn and process through that. So we do certainly use these components of the SFMA and the whole system within our entry level training, at least in, in physical therapy. And what I wanna focus on in this segment is the relationship of these top tier movements and a real focus on what we call multi-segmental flexion or that toe touch pattern. Now, when we talk about the selective functional movement assessment, we're looking at a lot of different movements, but again, selective. We're not doing everything. We're not catching every bit of hand and wrist. We're not catching every bit of the TMJ. But we are looking at cervical patterns through multiple planes. We're looking at upper extremity patterns, both behind your back and over your head. We're looking at a composite toe touch, a composite backwards band extension, a composite rotation, and then simply single leg balance on one side and the other, and then a squat. And when we think about these, I like to group them from a neurodevelopmental perspective. So think about cervical and upper extremity, right? Baby's moving his head, hers or her head, getting up on prone on elbows, loading that shoulder, and then starting to reach and move prior to really much else. And then, then as we progress through the spine, we've got spine flexion and extension. Those are straight plane movements, right? We're flexing or extending. So those are grouped together. And then essentially when you combine flexion and extension, you get rotation, it gets more complicated, right? It's flexion on one side, extension on the other. And then when you control for rotation, you've got balance. And then of course the squat is that straight plane uh, movement. So neurodevelopmentally, we like to think about these things. Then we like to think about them from their spinal sort of orientation or plane of movement. And what I want to focus on today is this flexion pattern, this multi-segmental flexion pattern. They're all important, not saying one's more important than the other, but when we think about something as fundamental as going down, trying to touch your toes, we're able to gain a lot of information about the patient's current functional status and things that can be going on. And, and again, it's important, we, we look at everything, but we start in the entry level training of our students at university and we start with toe touch. We'll always start with that because students are so excited to tell us about tight hamstrings and that's the reason why someone can't touch their toes. And then we bring a student up and we show them very clearly someone that can't touch their toes but has normal hamstring length. We're like, well, wait a minute, one size doesn't fit all, right? You have to diagnose people, and flexion is a great example of that. Of course, what else goes into it? We'll ask them, well, leg lifting or, or leg raising or posterior chain mobility, hip flexion mobility, we can, we can really call those different, you know, all really essentially part of the same movement. Can you lift your leg or flex your hip with your knee straight and your ankle straight, right? But then spines involved too. We need to get spine flexion. So all those components are, are part of it and it's important. So we've learned that flexion is a nice fundamental way to demonstrate the elegance of the concept of mobility and stability or really just the idea of how we systematically break down things, each pattern through our breakout process. So top tiers is great in terms of looking at all the patterns Flexion is extremely important and a real nice way to start your learning and your, your understanding of, of why movement is so important and looking at the components of it. And I, I just can't emphasize enough the importance of having a normal toe touch. Let's just, let's just look at it that way. When someone can get fingertips to toes and hit those criteria, are they weight shifting? Does the sacrum move or do they get a sacral angle that hits the mark? Basically, that represents posterior chain mobility. 
Are they doing it with a uniform spinal curve and how does that look overall, right? Effort, etc. When someone has that, that tells me that their pelvis, their, their hips and their core are working together into that plane and they're not protecting anything. Over the years, I've treated lots of patients with low back pain. My PhD work was looking into core function in patients with low back pain. So I spent a lot of time studying this. And one of the things that I found is once that toe touch comes back or is maximized and, and really also single leg stance, when those two things are working together to me, then I'm comfortable that a lot of those back pain patients are, are gonna get better. Like I'm, I'm kind of over the hump. Like I sleep better at night picturing my patients with a good toe touch. Right, but let's think about why. Why is it so important? Well, when I get out to touch my toes, my brain's processing a lot of information, right? There's information coming in through my feet, knees, hips, core. And here's why we get to the importance of the lumbar spine in this, okay? This is the key to this whole few minutes, is the information that you gain when you go down to touch your toes from an afferent and proprioceptive perspective. Let's get down the anatomy and think about the facet joint at the lumbar spine. Each of those facets sits primarily in that transverse plane. So they're gonna move, again, pretty much flexion extension. I know L5 starts to flatten out, but you've got joint capsules around the facets. And then you have those layers, five layers of the multifidus muscle laying right there next to the joint, right? Well, remember, multifidus is highly dense with muscle spindles. Muscle spindles help tell us where we are and how we're moving. You take the muscle spindle proprioceptive information from the multifidus. You take the sensors from the joint capsule right there on the facet joint, and that is enriching mood, um, information into the system to say, yes, it's okay to go down and touch your toes, or no, it's not. So if the brain perceives any kind of problem, like the information isn't quite right, the brain puts on the brakes, right? Well, what are the brakes to a toe touch? How can I slow down a toe touch? If you're writing the software for toe touch and you feel like there's something that's probably not right i don't want to go down through that full pattern how would i put on the brakes for the toe touch well i can kick in the erector spinae and credit credit extension moment in big muscles in the erector spinae and or i could turn on the hamstrings right the hamstrings are the brakes to the toe touch pattern so extremely important that we get lumbar flexion mobility so the facet joints can help tell us where we are. The multifidus function can help in, in, um, inform this, this system as well. But, so that gives me an opportunity to allow expression of normal hamstring mobility, to allow expression of the rest of my thorax to move and go down, head down and get those toes and allow that nice hip flexion along with the lumbar spine to work, okay? So again, every pattern is important. We've talked a little bit about from a neurodevelopmental lead, neurodevelopmental perspective, how they go together, and how flexion is really one of the simplest, most elegant expressions of, of how we break down movement and why having every component of the movement is important for normal motor control, which is, is crucial for all the movement and all the uh, daily activities and functional tasks that our patients want to do. Hey guys, if you like the video, definitely hit the thumbs up. And if you want to stay informed, hit the bell so we can notify you anytime we put up new videos. And of course, any questions or comments, put those at the end. We'll certainly be checking them out and trying to respond. Thanks so much. And remember, always move well and then move often.